Two of the most effective ways that a young man can spread the knowledge of God across the surface of the earth. Number one, preach the gospel. It's the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes. 1 Peter 2.9 says that we, his people, are to spread the excellencies of Jesus' glory. The second greatest way that a young man can spread the knowledge of God to both saints and sinners is by marrying a woman. Marrying a woman. Ephesians 5.25. I gotta try to get through this. <laughs> Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church. When a man loves his wife as Christ loves the church, saints see the love that their groom has for them. The lost, when it's done properly, they see if this is the way that Christ Jesus loves his people, I want to be one of them. How do you start? How do I love my bride like Christ loves his church? Well, first of all, you have to have one. <laughs> How did the Lord Jesus Christ, the bride's groom? <laughs> Not yet. How, <laughs> How did the Lord Jesus Christ get his bride? Of course, we know he was the Lord of the Old Testament. Jesus Christ is Lord. When they would say that in the New Testament, they were saying that Jesus Christ was the Lord of the Old Testament. How did he get Israel? It says that he chose her. If Maria were to come up this aisle this morning and say, Here I am, Martin, take me, I'm yours. That's not how it's done. The groom does the proposing. It would be un unfitting, wouldn't it, beloved? It would be unbecoming if she were to propose to him. I know it's been done, but it's not, it's not becoming, and it's also not biblical. It says in De Deuteronomy chapter 10, Behold the heavens and the highest heavens, the earth and everything that belongs in them. And in the context, it's talking about angels and men. It says they all belong to the Lord their God. God owns them all. But then it says, yet it was on your fathers. He's talking to Israel, the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph. It was on your fathers that he set his affection and chose their descendants after them. You see, God's love, beloved, has many different aspects and degrees and facets to it. It's not this, this amorphous kind of love that is so often portrayed in the church and in the world. God has different kinds of love. Even Jesus said this, didn't he? If anyone loves their father or mother more than me, they're not worthy of me. If they love their children more than me, they're not worthy of me. God has different kinds of love, and we are made in His image. In a few minutes, Martin must love her above all else besides God. His love for Maria will be different than his love for his parents, than his love for his siblings, than his friends, than his pets. Do you see, beloved? God has... No, I, I, that's not a joke. It's pathetic. So many humans... <laughs> I'm being serious because so many pets are, are idols to people and they love their pets more than image bearers. So I, I, that's, that is not a joke, you see. And this is what the Lord did with Israel. It says that he, he chose them, and it says in, in Deuteronomy 7, 6 and 7, 7, that he chose them instead of all the other peoples of the earth. He passed by the Parasites, the Jebusites, the Canaanites, the Amorites. No, no, he has to love them all the same. No, no he doesn't. When they all deserve his just wrath and eternal damnation, he can do whatever he wants. Well, I know Israel was the best nation, Michael. That's why he... No, 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 no. Israel turned out to be worse than the ones he didn't choose. You see the nature of the love of God towards his bride, beloved? He chose the least worthy. Why, Michael? Why did he do that? He's the chooser of losers. Do you understand that, beloved? God goes the route that brings the most glory in, out of him. So he chooses Israel. He sets his affection on them, on her. Another version says that he attached himself to them. Another version says he fastened his love upon Israel and Israel alone. This is very, very important, beloved, to get this. Now, that means in a few minutes, 
She is set apart to Martin, just like the Lord set Israel apart to him. Another version says that the Lord had a delight in Israel that he didn't have in the other nations. This is what is happening here today. Now, and this is not just the Lord Jesus choosing his bride Israel in the Old Testament. This is the Lord Jesus with his bride in the New Testament, which of course is comprised of Jew and Gentile. What did he say? You did not choose me, but I chose you, you see. And here we're even more biblical today than we realize, beloved. Like I said earlier, Maria didn't run up the aisle and say, here I am, take me. How was Maria presented to Martin? She was given to him by a parent. Jesus refers to his bride repeatedly and emphatically that his bride, his church, are those whom the Father has given him. So it was very, very biblical that a parent of Maria gave her away today. Now, that's the nature. Martin's got him a bride. But how is he to love her as Christ loves the church? What is the nature of this love? As we heard from Joel earlier, love is as strong as death. What does it say about the Lord Jesus, the ultimate groom? It says that he gave himself up for her. Philippians 2.8 says that Jesus, he became obedient unto death, even the death of a cross. Jesus Christ loves his bride to death. That's the nature of the love of God for his bride. Now, when the love is like that, something else kicks in from Song of Solomon that Joel read. It says that jealousy is as unrelenting as the grave. Two years ago, if a bunch of guys were calling Maria on her cell phone and trying to ask her out, Martin could care less. Well, why not? Well, number one, he didn't know her. (laughs) Right? Number two, he had not yet set his affection on her. Number three, He had not yet chosen her to be his and his alone. But you see, beloved, just like we we heard in Jeremiah chapter 2, when the Lord set Israel apart to himself, all of a sudden, don't any of you other nations go near her. It says, she's my first fruits. And in Israel, the first fruits were all the Lord's and no one else's. And he says, Israel, my bride, are my first fruits. And it says, anyone who devoured her, disaster overcame them. You see, now, if those guys are calling on her, disaster. Now, you see? (laughs) But do you see that, beloved? That is a divine thing. If he does not have that godly jealousy, there's something wrong with his love for her. You see? Something we must understand. Have you ever gone to the Old Testament, like I have, and you see passages about the, the fierce wrath of God, how he just totally wipes out people, and, and, and saints and sinners, sinners hate God for it, and saints re, are repulsed by it, and we go to other Bible chapters. Come on, you can be honest. Me too. But you know what? We missed out on the glory of God. Do you see, beloved? God's anger, talking about his bride, comes from his jealousy. His jealousy is your security. And God's jealousy, the degree of that is proportionate to his love. You see, we've missed out on the glory of God and the security that we have, knowing that's how fiercely he loves us. That's the kind of love that Martin must love his bride as Christ loves the church. And this is a verse I can't take in. And I feel like the apostle Peter after Jesus did a miracle and showed his glory. And Peter said, Lord, depart from me. Get away from me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. But this is what happens. What is this love of God? That when he sets it on a bride, on a group of people, and as he, he poured his heart out through the prophet Hosea in chapter 11, verse 8, when, he dis- when his bride was adulterous, she had given herself to many other lovers of idols of other lands. And she deserved judgment and divorce from him. And you know what he says? It says in chapter 8, Oh, Ephraim, how can I give you up? Oh, Israel, how can I let you go? He goes, all of my emotions, my heart is turned over within me. I am am stirred. And here you find the Lord of hosts who's self-sufficient. He has need of no one or no thing. He was doing fine until he created human beings. 
He doesn't need us. And yet, what, have you, what are you doing, Lord? Why are you making yourself vulnerable, so to speak, to this group of people you call your bride, where if they don't love you first and foremost, it tears you apart? This is the nature of the love of God for his bride. That's why I can barely get into these texts that I, I feel this, Jesus, please. I, no more, I can't take you. I can't take you, Lord. I can't take this kind of love. And that is the love that a young man is supposed to love his wife like. Welcome to the impossible. But the old preacher said God never calls us to do anything we can do in ourselves. He always calls us to do the impossible. And that's what Martin is called here to do today. He's forsaking all others, and he's taking Maria, and Maria alone. Wow, and here's the thing for Maria. The Lord was looking back over Israel in the early years. I remember when you were a new bride to me, and he, the Lord said, I remember the devotion of those years, Israel, my bride, well, because you followed me through the wilderness, through a land unsown. That proved Israel's love for him is that they followed him. And now Maria is about to follow her husband wherever the Lord leads him, richer or poorer, sickness and in health, better or for worse. And you know, the Lord was delighted that Israel followed him in those early years through a wilderness. You know what it will do for Maria? It will prove her love for Martin, even when she disagrees, and there will be many times of disagreement, but it also proves her love for God. She'll follow him, you see. Another thing that's beautiful. I must tell you this, and this wasn't planned. The most influential man in my life was Paul Johansson, the former president of Elam. And this is what he told his wife before he asked her to marry him. He said, I can't promise you the American dream. I can't promise you riches or, you know, that we'll live in a real posh neighborhood. But I promise you this, the will of God. I know this young man enough since nine years old that that is what he's promising her. Do you notice... Maria is adorned, and you see the white, of course, and it says in Ephesians 5 that, that when Jesus gave himself up for her, it was to cleanse her and make her spotless and make her worthy. And how did he do that? It says that Jesus, of Christ, of course, gave his bride his righteousness. There it is, symbolized by the white in her gown. If we really want to be biblical, my dear little brother, you need to buy the dress and pay for it. He's, he's choking. But you see, but think about it, beloved, the white gown that Jesus gives freely to all who ask to cover his bride who are so unworthy is his righteousness. And Jesus paid for it with his precious blood. I won't press that on you, dear bro. But there it is. Now I've got, now any of you have been with me before ministering the word of God. I normally have dozens of object lessons, but I've been good today. I've only brought one. Mm -hmm. Uh, your wedding gift to me for doing this is I know I went past 10 minutes, but okay. <laughs> but here's what you're going to do. I'm, for, I, I'm going to join you in just a few minutes, but you got to separate right now. So you just stay there, honey, because I know that you're, you get over there, okay? This is how you make it in a marriage. Okay, who am I supposed to be? Please exercise faith. I know. Who? No! Jesus? The high priest. Yes, Jesus. Now. All right. So I'm going to take your hand. You get as far away from her as possible. Just for now. Okay. <laughs> now, do you, this is how this works, beloved. This is how marriage works. This is how marriage survives. Who's in the middle between them two? Right. Now watch. They're, they're, they're apart from each other. Okay. So as Jesus goes and leads them, in his, what's the natural tendency for them to do? What direction do they go? go towards the other, don't they? They will disagree. They will be separated at times and many times through the marriage, but you see they're both holding on to him. And as they both follow him individually, look what it does. It pulls them closer together. Amen. Amen.